Hi guys, Joe here with another episode of Fight Crossing Friday coming to you from my dining room. Yeah, fish tank there, wine rack there. <laughs> Ignore that. Um, today's question is then, I feel I look slimmer but the scales are saying that I'm the same weight. How is this? What can I eat before a workout? How to get rid of cellulite? Are fat burners a lot of crap or not? And what are the guidelines on body fat percentages for females? Right, so the first question we've got then, I feel I look slimmer, but the scales say I'm the same weight. How can this be? Um, so when you start working out, start training, this can give you the feeling of actually being slimmer and feeling fitter, okay? Even if things haven't changed. If they literally have, so your clothes are hanging off for you, your measurements have gone smaller, but the scales have stayed the same, this can be down to your body composition, okay? So your body composition has changed. Uh, what I mean by that is your body fat levels have dropped, your muscle percentage or muscle uh, mass levels have increased, all right? As we all are aware by now, uh, a pound of muscle and a pound of fat, obviously they weigh the same, but the pound of muscle has a lot less volume, okay? So it's a smaller amount, okay? Which means when it comes to your body, if you lose a pound of fat, but gain a pound of muscle, the weight on the scales doesn't change, but your body figure, your body shape will get smaller. That's it, okay? Uh, there's various other things that will affect your weight on the scale as well. We won't get into too much, but you can look at uh, fluid retention. You can look at if you've had an increased salt intake throughout the day, that'll increase uh, your weight on the scale as well, it's very, as well as other various um, influences on your weight on the scale. Remember, it's just one method for tracking, okay? It's not the best method for tracking. You can look at taking pictures, measurements, uh, how your clothes look and feel on you, that kind of thing as well, all right? It's just one means, guys, one means. Don't base your life on your weight on the scales. Moving on to question number two. What can I eat before a workout? Okay, so uh, carbohydrates and protein with hydration being the focus during the workout, okay? Um, so before any workout, depending, uh, doesn't matter what time of day, if you're looking for some fuel before the workout, you're looking at something with carbs or pro and protein, okay? Um, my go-to, my, my quick advice would be if you're working out in the morning, obviously you just come off fast because you've been sleeping, unless you sleep off to the fridge. Um, then you can have like a banana and some yogurt uh, in the morning before you work out, okay? If you're not into having like a full-blown meal, like breakfast before a workout. Um, if it's a, like a lunchtime workout, you could have like a bagel with some jam in it or a, a rice cake with some jam in it. Um, just get that influx of carbs again. Or if it's an evening, you've had your meals throughout the day, so you've had breakfast, you had a nice lunch as well, um, you could just have like some jellied sweets. Uh, my go-to would be jelly beans, because you know, they are ace, they rock, okay? But all you need to do guys is just get a little bit more carbs in your body, just give yourself a little bit more of a kick, okay? You can even, uh, have, you can even, I would highly recommend if you're struggling for energy as well, just have a, a caffeine hit, so like an espresso or an Americano or something like that. Uh, just to give you a bit more of a perk, a bit more uh, life, okay? Um, yeah, that's it. Question number three then, can you get rid of cellulite? Okay, so first off I want to say that uh, cellulite isn't just present in people that are overweight, okay? There's people that are of healthy weight that can have cellulite as well. It doesn't, it isn't determined by your, by your uh, body fat amount, okay? Uh, so it's not because you're fat, <laughs> okay? Um, the cause is unknown, which is why there's no real cure for cellulite. Yes, there's people out there that will say that there's many ways you can go around reducing your cellulite with like uh, laser surgery, all this kind of jazz. I'm not going to touch on that because it's not my area of uh, expertise. What I will say is, um, well, before I give you some advice on how we can possibly reduce it, let's look at what cellulite is. And so um, it, it's formed when fatty tissue deep in the skin pushes up against the connective tissue, okay? Now, connective tissue is a little bit different between males and females. The connective tissue is a little bit more densely uh, knitted woven in a male, which is why you don't really see much uh, cellulite in males. It's a lot more present, uh, prevalent in females. Sorry, ladies. Um, when the fatty tissue pushes up against the, the uh, connective tissue, this creates a dimpled appearance, so that, you know, that um, uh, cellulite, really, uh, the appearance of cellulite, what it looks like, you know what I mean. Um, so, how can we potentially reduce it? So we need to look at your lifestyle, it needs to be a healthy lifestyle with a balanced diet, as well as uh, being adequately hydrated, okay? Keeping your skin hydrated is key, 
for uh, reducing cellulite appearance. Um, because if it's hydrated, it gets nice and taut, uh, tight, okay? Which means it reduces that dimpled appearance in the skin. Smoking is really bad for cellulite as well, so cut that out. It's bad for so many other reasons as well, but for cellulite, it's not good either. Um, and appropriate exercise can help reduce the amount of cellulite as well, okay? Um, it's not a cure, but it can help reduce the appearance uh, by doing resistance training and by tightening the skin with adequate hydration. So that's my thoughts on cellulite, guys. Sorry, there's no real cure for it, um, but there is ways and means around reducing the appearance of it. Any more questions on that, guys, just comment below. Uh, moving on to question number four then. Are fat burners a lot of crap or do they actually work? Yes, this is a great question, okay, because I'm going to try and avoid ranting. Um, so most ingredients in fat burners are useless, all right? The main ingredient uh, which isn't useless would be caffeine. And if you're not aware yet, or if you're not uh, uh, of the understanding of what coffee is, it's caffeine. A lot cheaper than fat burners. Uh, so if you're looking for that kind of thing, then get a pot of coffee. Um, now, the, it may, fat burners may work, okay, and the, that is a big thing, may, okay, because there's no hard facts, there's no hard proof that fat burners actually do work. Um, they may work by increasing your TDEE, which is your total daily energy expenditure, all right, um, may increase fat oxidization and fat released to be used for energy, may, all right, no positive answer there, all right. Um, the effective ones are the ones that are known for being uh, effective, all right, are uh, illegal. So if there's some tool bag company out there that's like, illegal in the UK, but we're supplying them, we're stocking them, avoid them because they're twats, okay? You don't want to be taking that stuff because it's not being approved by the um, FDA, I believe it's FDA, uh, quote me, uh, qu correct me if I'm wrong there guys, I think it's FDA, the, uh, the drug um, association that, yeah, approves of things like that okay um, so yeah if it's uh, effective then it's most, it's the illegal ones that are most effective and they normally have nasty side effects all right anxiety being a huge one okay so we don't want to be taking them um, TDE can be increased with some caffeine and a pedometer so giving yourself a set target uh, and a shot of coffee can improve it and increase it anyway so there's no real need for fat burners because that does the same okay and it's less harmful um, may contain some nasty ingredients as well and there's been some studies published on PubMed which have shown people being hospitalized after taking uh, things claiming to be fat burners I mean if that's not a good enough reason to avoid taking fat burners I don't know what is okay save your money save a trip to hospital um, <laughs> save having any anxiety and just stick to coffee yeah, that's it, all right? Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna rant about it. Moving on to question number five then. Final question in five question Friday. What are the body fat guides or body fat percentage guides for females? All right then, so I looked it up a little bit because I need to refresh my memory on this because uh, basically the percentages, I, I don't focus on them at all really as numbers. As long as they're coming down with my clients, we're good, all right? Because um, depending on what machine you weigh on and measure your body fat on, you'll get a totally different number. All right. So if you are tracking your body fat, make sure it's on the same scales, same kind of time of day, same uh, same variables affecting it. All right. Um, now the percentages, uh, essential fat levels need to be between ten and thirteen percent. Anything lower than that, then you're getting into dangerous territory. Okay. Um, or you're probably stepping on stage to compete. <laughs> Mad people. Um, Athletic, you're looking at 14 to 20%. Uh, fitness area, you're looking at 21 to 24, okay? So having that nice toned, toned look, um, being 21 to 24 for females. Uh, the average, all right, not saying this is great, okay? Average uh, across the UK would be between 25 and 31%. Now, that is holding some body fat there, all right? So you're holding on to body fat, um, probably pushing overweight. Uh, and then 32% uh, or above is classed as obese, all right? Now, uh, like I said, depending on what scale and what means you have for measuring your body fat, depends on the figure you get percentage-wise, all right? So use the same method and just ensure that number comes down if you're looking to reduce it. Uh, an example on these numbers, if someone was weighing 10 stone or 140 pounds, um, to be average, you'd be looking at holding between 35 and 43 pounds of body fat, to be in that fitness area, 
you'd be looking at 29 uh, so, uh, pounds or uh, between 29 pounds and 33 34 pounds of body fat okay so as you can see it's quite a lot really in when you think about it but body fat is essential okay you need it you cannot reduce your body fat to zero all right you would die literally um that's it guys that's five questions friday over and done with if you've got any questions you'd like me to answer comment below or inbox me if you're shy if there's someone you know that would benefit from seeing the video tag them below or share it give us some love guys put it out there share it across uh, facebook world all right until next friday have a nice weekend i'll catch you then bye